what's creamy? I have a lot of beef with those Rust rewrites of core utils like Zoxide and Eza and New Shell. New Shell's a little different, but things that are just basically core utils with fancier colors and nice wrappers. Perfect example is Eza, which is a modern alternative to LS. Like, who the fuck asked for this shit? And it's, I think it's really indicative of uh, the modern developer that this thing has nearly 18,000 stars on GitHub. And it's also a big... Uh, when something is sponsored by Warp, I'm pretty suspicious of it, to be honest. It's just like the soy dev activities. Yes, you can probably get a little bit of benefit out of this. So this is kind of nice, right? This is showing you the perm codes, and then it's showing you its size, I guess. And then I guess maybe this is the user, and then like a date it was modified or created, and then... I don't exactly know what this column is meant to be. I guess something with git tracking status or maybe, I don't know. And then there's the file name, right? This is all basically achievable with vanilla LS. If you just read the man page for like three seconds, you would see there are flags for all of those things. In fact, this is practically just an LS LA. And I think you could probably pass uh, capital G to colorize your output and it's like, why did you have to, it's it's cool to like rebuild these things as a learning experience, but why is this so commercialized? Why does this have a sponsor and this many stars on GitHub? This is like peak unemployed, like I'm gonna change this thing for the look of it and I've never had to LS and use the file permissions for an actual job. And when people tell me like, oh look, it's an unemployed guy roasting another unemployed guy, shut the fuck up, I'm 20 and I make more money than you. You're on YouTube consuming some content about how one LS replacement is less optimal than another LS replacement. At least I'm selling the shovels here and I have multiple jobs. So yeah, shut the fuck up. Uh, but anyway, to be more nice, most people aren't like that. It's just like, seriously guys, do you even think about that? How, um, yeah, how, how reflective of your own insecurities comments like that are? But anyway, so this is a little cool. I guess we're getting like a tree. Um, view of a directory. There are some features and things like this that are kind of nice. Same thing goes for Zoxide, but this is going to be about LS. Like, why why use something like this? Why install an extra dependency? It's like, this isn't a performance critical thing. You're using this to monitor some basic stuff. Um, so if we boot up the man page for LS, you can see it has a ton of options, like a ton of options. And this looks intimidating, but this is like a three minute read, dude. You go through this and it explains every option and then you can kind of build a custom LS for yourself. Uh, so I have one, I think in, let's see, I marked it for this video. So my LS, basically what it does is it, it lists out, obviously, uses LS. Dash C is for columns. I like that. I like it instead of like, um, what's it called? Instead of like rows, I like it in columns. So. I can, I can actually source that and show you what it looks like. And then we have colorized directories, which I didn't have for a while because I didn't read the man page, but it's pretty easy. You just pass um, either color equals auto or dash G, I think is a shortcut for that. And then dash T is to sort by the time modified, I believe, and dash U, I'm not actually sure. It was a while ago that I added this, but we could look at it. Um, oh, oops, man LS, and then let's look dash you um okay the time when the file is created and sorted okay so that's that's for sorted by time let's see dash t sorted by descending time okay so i like right i like the newest files first and then dash a what is that for i think that's for all without uh the up directories yeah so this is basically saying list out everything like dot git ignore and stuff, which is useful to know about, but don't include dot and dot dot slash because I kind of know about that automatically. It's I think it's a little redundant. And then dash p, what does that mean? Um, it's a little lowercase p. Oh, write a slash after directories. Okay, yeah, that's not totally necessary if they're colorized, but that's that's how I like it. And then there's a couple other things you probably want to know about. There's lsla, which basically is like a l. This A stands for all, and then this uh, dash L is like long. And the long format can be customized too, I, I believe, but I like to keep these separate. So I kind of have one LS, this is my like utility main LS. And this LS is usually for checking uh, file permissions. And then I think, yeah, this also shows you just date modification, all that stuff, which is like literally just exactly what this does. Yeah, it's like not as pretty printed and whatever, but who actually needs that? Like if you're, 
if you're so unemployed that you're like looking around for micro optimizations and like the colorization of your LS, you really need to work on a project that's more meaningful than that. Cause this is honestly, it's turning into a bit of like Unix consumerism. It's like just people like looking for super optimal Golang and Rust rewrites of things that already work instead of actually doing work on their own meaningful projects, you're just consuming other people's work like relentlessly. Yeah, this I don't have as my main LS just because it goes off screen. And also I, I configured my root user to be my full name, which is dumb. It should have just been like a nickname so this wouldn't go off. And there's probably some way to configure this and I could just pipe it to um, said or something and, and get rid of this. But honestly, I use this infrequently enough that having this main LS and then just having that LS is the best way to do it. But yeah, let me let me see if I'm missing anything about LS. I don't I don't really think I am. It's just it's such a simple thing. And honestly, like I feel like you're better off instead of having like a big overall thing like this to just when when you like want some kind of specific feature of of LS, you know, um, just open the manual, read the flags and you'll just have a much better learning experience overall. I just, this looks just so performative to me. Like the fact that they've got a star history, you know, it's like, what do these guys think they're a company? This is like some, some random weekend project. Also, how the fuck is this so big? I guess maybe there's more than, uh, than meets the eye to LS, but like there's literally just so many config files and so much, so many like things, so much stuff going on just to get LS working, which is pre-installed on your system. Like, why are you installing all this? This fucking 3,300 commits to make this thing work. I mean, I'm sure LS took a long time to make too, but it's like, why install all these fancy alternatives? I feel similarly about Zoxide. I've made another video about that, but there are, there are good, it's not alternatives that are good, usually. It's like things that haven't been seen before. Like I used to bash on the new shell for being kind of, um, performative and soy, but new shell has some interesting features when it comes to data science and JSON formatting. It's, it's just a, that's a different project, but this is like, just what is the point? It's, it would be one thing if you're a senior developer, like, and you've spent years and you use like a very specific feature of this, you know, it's possible I'm overlooking some kind of uh, thing that this can do that LS completely can't. And there's like a specific workflow that this is for. I would not be totally shocked, but the reason I'm like hating on this so hard is because even if that's the case, I would bet just based on my own experience of installing this when I was a noob, you're not using it for that specific use case, if that makes sense. Most noobs, most juniors are just installing this because they just want the pretty print of uh, LS and they can't be bothered to read a couple of flags or enable like Zish syntax highlighting or whatever. It's it's not about those features and it, most noobs are as well not like deep following sim links in trees and, and, and if you want that tree view you know dude just like go here and type tree and then like d or is it l equals l2 you know and then boom you've got the fucking same thing and i would not be surprised if tree yeah look at look at all that you can achieve exactly the same thing just by reading a little bit but nope people need that cargo install command to feel good about their workflow these days god damn